So we've also received um, uh, many other uh, questions uh, having nothing to do with the theme of today, also in the chat of last time, uh, very specific uh, cases were mentioned. Today, we are not going to solve uh, any uh, single case because there may be so many different cases. Today, we are going to answer the questions you've um, sent out. Should you need any further uh, advisory uh, activity, you may contact uh, other kind of lawyers. So should you like to contact uh, Sister Tiziana, uh, you can make agreements uh, with her, but uh, this is uh, not within the free of charge um, uh, advisory activity of UICG. You may imagine all the you know, questions asked uh, to Sister Tiziana. Uh, she can answer many, uh, but not all of them uh, due to lack of time. And so please do not uh, write uh, questions or, or requests for clarifications in the chat because we are not going to answer these. It's not that we are unwilling to do so. We will consider them in our archives because we are always listening to your voices, but we cannot uh, um, answer right today, right now. Well, I think that uh, time has come uh, for uh, leaving the floor to Sister Tiziana. She will help us uh, start uh, with a very beautiful prayer. Here I am. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today, it's the feast of uh, Mary Magdalene. So I think uh, that uh, it is beautiful to invoke her and uh, to sort of um, devote to her our commitment uh, to be the witnesses of resurrection. So I've uh, chosen this prayer which says, O oh Lord Jesus, uh, you died and you were resurrected for us. Uh, come to make your uh, light uh, shine on our morning. Your greeting may uh, make us filled with joy, um, interrupting all our doubts and fears. O oh, come, Jesus. And as you did with Mary Magdalene, call us by our names. Our secret name, you are the only one who know. You who look into the intimacy of our hearts. So filled with your glorious light, we are going to proclaim you to the whole world, taking in our body the perfume of your uh, resurrected flesh, which is a, a premise for our resurrection. Amen, alleluia. Here we are. We'll have the difficult job of asking questions, Tiziana. This is what we said with the Patrizia. It's better for her to repeat the questions that we have received. And I will try and answer these questions. Let's start. And we do hope that, uh, technology is going to work. Thank you very much, uh, Tiziana, for being so um, available, so kind. So you've uh, broken down into three major themes of the question. So the first has to do with the letter. The second uh, has uh, to do with the general chapters. And the last part uh, has to do with the formation and all the um, activities about formation. Let's start with the uh, first theme. What? Does the document published on July the 1st on the councils held uh, online? Well, I imagine that everybody has been able to read this letter. Well, to put it this way, I myself had to deepen and ask for explanations because uh, there are some items that uh, at least in my opinion were not all too clear. So 
we do hope uh, I will be able to um, eliminate uh, these doubts, the fog of doubt. Let's start, first of all, the letter takes into account the request made by so many institutes about the possibility of using online digital means during the general councils and the provincial councils. Now the dicastery asked the Pope, as you may know, the Pope is the supreme, the highest legislator. So it's asked him for an extraordinary faculty, extraordinary power. which is uh, contemplated uh, for those who would like to deepen this more in a pastor bonus, in the document uh, called the pastor bonus uh, in number 18. This is a power, this is extraordinary power attributed by the Pope to the dicastery and consisting in authorizing the derogation, the departure and the letter says for single cases, individual cases. So to derogate to Canon 166, paragraph one, which as a matter of fact, requires to convene the same place and same hour, all the members of the general council and or of the provincial council. For this reason, first of all, I'd, I'd like to clarify. This derogation, and uh, here it is uh, underlined uh, for individual cases meaning for individual institutes. So be careful, because there's a little bit of confusion on this point here. It is not envisaged that uh, a general superior on the eve of a council where by a uh, vote will be launched uh, on a given decision uh, should uh, ask uh, for authorization in order to vote uh, online. And then in the following council has uh, to make the same request again. No, it's not uh, what we mean here. The request can be made generally speaking. In other words, a general superior may ask the dicastery for this authorization, both for all general councils that need to be held in this uh, exceptional time of pandemic, as well as she can make the request and in the same letter she can add uh, the same request also for provincial uh, councils so that the authorization be given for all the situations concerning the same institute i do hope it, uh, i made myself clear so there's no need uh, to ask uh, uh, on a case-by-case -case, uh, scenario every time of this authorization, but the general superior can do so for the councils. In number three, it is said that the uh, major superior should 
should receive the uh, consensus of uh, his or uh, council in order to uh, submit a request for authorization to the congregation. So you may understand very well that here, there's an issue here, meaning that this consensus, sorry, this consent may be obtained uh, online uh, by digital means, uh, considering uh, the conditions uh, due to um, COVID-19 pandemic. So do not hesitate. This is what it is written here, meaning that uh, the major superior asks uh, telematically the um, consent of her council in order to be authorized to hold uh, uh, councils using uh, telecommunications. So this was a, a, an impasse that could not be uh, overcome in another manner. So we are all okay, because this is what is said in this number three of the letter. Well, another question following along the same lines. Shall I um, ask another question? No, not yet. Well, because this is the longest answer to all questions. Well, another question I've uh, incorporated in uh, question number one is the following. Uh, should we specify the means used, uh, the types of uh, platforms used, uh, and the answer being no? There's no need to specify which platform is used or will be used. Another perplexity that was raised is the following. Could the dicastery have made my, my, a general derogation, temporary? gender derogation valid uh, for all the institutes? In my opinion, yes, the answer is yes, it could have done so. But the path that has been chosen is uh, that each institute should uh, make this request. And no doubt uh, this is uh, to be cautious and for everybody to understand that this is a absolutely extraordinary, exceptional situation. And once COVID-19 is uh, destroyed, and we do hope uh, it will be as soon as possible with the vaccine, well, of course, there's a need to get back to the pre-COVID-19 situation whereby the fact of uh, meeting together and getting together is the fundamental value and also the responsibility of uh, governments to promote communion, strong communion within the institute starting off from the councils. Another element that needs to be stressed is the one contained in number four, meaning that there's a need to choose for a platform guaranteeing the possibility of being connected and uh, guaranteeing the confidentiality of the voting procedures. And also these um, uh, council meetings, uh, there's a need to um, uh, cater for confidentiality. Well, this means uh, that the recording should be avoided as far as possible. 
and then there's a need to check and verify the identity of the participants in the telecommunication meeting. And of course, in the best case scenario, there's the webcam, which greatly helps identify the participants, the attendees or not. So, but there's a need to um, verify the identity of the participants. Another concern has been to give the possibility to all those intervening, uh, um, the possibilities to all attendees to uh, intervene in real time during the deliberations. And this uh, to uh, ensure full participation instead of having members that are sort of put in disadvantage the conditions as compared to others because communication can be interrupted and so in case of deliberations there's a need to wait for all the others to be connected to connect again these are tools which cannot uh, in any way um, reduce or downgrain, downplay the um, goals of a council meeting, uh, first and foremost, uh, discernment and uh, good governance. Well, I think that this part this part here of the letter on councils is about what I'm just uh, sharing with you. So it is possible, I repeat once again, it is possible to hold uh, council meetings uh, using the platforms, but uh, on condition that uh, a, an authorization is requested and uh, it is worth it to say that when number three says uh, the major superior, of course, here, what is meant uh, here is uh, both the general superior and the provincial superior. So the major superior means both of them. Now, clearly enough, there's uh, the possibility of acting that way, but in order to avoid long procedures and uh, to send too many letters and uh, communications uh, uh, to the dicastery, the uh, general superior should do so in the name of everybody, but uh, the provincial superior uh, in their capacity as major superior can ask uh, for this authorization independently, autonomously from the general superior. So I've sent to you the link to um, download the um, letter in all the languages. Uh, Sister Tiziana, as uh, this uh, retroactive uh, power on decisions that have been made uh, before, the answer is no. No, because the code of the canon law states that uh, every law does not have a retroactive um, uh, quality unless uh, this is specified uh, into new law replacing uh, repealing the old one. So the question being what can we do for the decisions that have been already made uh, in this form using platforms uh, without uh, being authorized uh, by the dicastery? I'd say that it is true that uh, legislation says uh, that ignorance uh, should not be a pretext, uh, but uh, given uh, the special situation we're in, I'd say, well, yes. Uh, but uh, if there are situations uh, that are concerning, uh, that are most uh, worrying to you, uh, very delicate situations for which you may incur uh, unpleasant uh, consequences, uh, so I think that uh, you should uh, ask the dicastery uh, for a sort of uh, uh, 
remedi uh, remediation. So you have uh, to show the uh, decision that has been made uh, by specifying that you didn't know how to do so, you've acted uh, that way using uh, uh, telecommunications, but uh, it's not a big issue. So use uh, common sense for those cases. So when there's a need to do so, you can still make a request to uh, the dicastery. Thank you very much. Very last uh, question on the document. Could you please uh, suggest the w which is the best software for online voting? On the occasion of the previous uh, webinar, I um, got inf informed uh, and I contacted experts because I'm not knowledgeable about platforms uh, and I was um, uh, suggested uh, that there are three major platforms, one being Eligo. I don't know whether, Patricia, you would like to note them down on the chat. Another one is Intranet. And another one is uh, the Vox Vote. Uh, Datacom. But of course, you have to invest uh, on these platforms. There's no need to um, try and find uh, means free of charge because, of course, there's a need to uh, uh, keep the confidentiality of the voting. And uh, as we were saying uh, last time, the confidentiality and secrecy of voting is not uh, out of love for secrecy for the sake of secrecy but it's for the sake of freedom that we have uh, to guarantee at the moment uh, when people are voting because these are platforms and there's a need to um, invest in these platforms so you have uh, to assign uh, up an agreement. Uh, let's move on to general chapters now. Is there a need to be uh, in person at a general chapter? Why not uh, having uh, an election uh, through video conferencing uh, if uh, personal exchange in group for discernment is guaranteed uh, as well as uh, the secrecy of voting? This is the second part of the letter, which uh, insists and uh, emphasizes the fact that, so it is repeated, the fact that, uh, what, cannot celebrate uh, the chapters uh, using uh, telecommunications means the values supporting the presence are indicated uh, in number five and six of the letter and these numbers are very clear. I just uh, mentioned them but, but suffice it to read the letter. This mention of uh, synodality uh, using the special form of um, uh, chapter collegiality. There's a secular tradition supporting the um, uh, in-person meetings as uh, the um, way, the manner par excellence to promote uh, uh, the search for common good. Now, I believe that no doubt many institutes uh, are uh, in difficult situations uh, uh, for the very fact of having to postpone chapters. And we may understand this, uh, that this is um, a huge um, impairment. And of course, the questions, uh, like uh, last time, the question was uh, for how long? Now, talking with uh, somebody in the dicastery, people said that before one year, uh, for one year, there's uh, pr prolonging, postponing uh, one year is not uh, a big issue because uh, we were saying, generally speaking, uh, constitutions uh, already have a six month window for prolonging. Okay. 
So if, if there are good reasons, a chapter can be uh, postponed uh, for another six months. Now, considering the very special situation, um, you can double this uh, six month period uh, and take it to one year. Now we've seen also in the experience uh, over the last few months that no doubt uh, these means uh, are excellent, uh, are exceptional, and we are seeing it. Uh, how many people are connected uh, to a Today, 186 uh, people connected. Uh, this is huge, this is uh, really huge, but uh, in-person meetings uh, um, are valuable and I think that this is a value we cannot give up. And we have to support and to encourage. And I'm thinking of all the institutes with younger members so no doubt, being meeting together, being brought together to develop the uh, chapter body is a, a completely different uh, thing than being connected online. It will be um, viable for how long? I don't know. I don't know. But in the letter, it is uh, stated uh, the importance of this uh, collegiality which is uh, responsible for co-responsibility, the listening of the spirit. So the answer is, um, is it necessary to be a present in person? Well, yes, the answer being yes. For how long? I don't, I, I don't know. We have to see. We cannot say n now. It is uh, clear for everybody that we are living through a very special situation. So we have much more questions than answers. Now the prolongation of councils is valid for full members or for all the members of the Korea. Well, this question has to do with the decree because be careful. Uh, this published uh, on July the 1st is a letter that uh, communicates uh, about the special powers uh, of the Pope, whereas uh, the one issued uh, in, uh, on April the 2nd was a general decree where it is said, it was said, it was reminded uh, that the mandates, the terms uh, of uh, major superiors and their councils are uh, prolonged uh, uh, until the next uh, celebration of the chapters. So all the staff members, quote unquote, that according to constitutions is elected in a general chapter or a provincial chapter, well, their mandates are considered to be prolonged, uh, including the members of a couriers that may have been elected during a chapter. If of course, the secretary or the bursar, the treasurer are appointed by the councils. In that case, logically enough, these councils were still in exercise, may appoint, may um, renew the same mandate uh, to the bursar or the treasurer to the next, uh, to the following chapter. And I think that this is advisable for the whole group to get together to the celebration of the following chapter. But it all depends upon the councils themselves. Sister Tiziana, the next um, the question is a little bit difficult. We are asking too much of you. Is the dicastery uh, changing uh, their attitudes vis-a-vis uh, -vis virtual online uh, chapters? Of course, I'm not the dicastery. I called the dicastery to uh, tell, to ask them, what does that mean? So help us understand a little bit here. We do hope We do hope that the vaccine uh, against the virus uh, will um, arrive soon. Well, in my opinion, yes, there may be a possibility to try and find other solutions. 
if something happens. But these are my own personal ideas. So no problem for me to explain this. I like very much uh, Canon 119 in number three. It st states to say that what is a uh, right for everybody if this right is attacked or is impaired by a given situation, there's a need to approve. So amongst the rights we're talking about in this case, there's this right to a secret ballot because this is truly a right. So if in the end, we have to celebrate uh, these uh, chapters because we cannot postpone them. Uh, in my opinion, one of the possibilities might be this one to ask all delegates to say their opinion on the effect of uh, giving up uh, this right to a secret ballot and in case of unanimity, in the event of unanimity, I think that we might proceed. But we're talking here about a super exceptional situation that might be a way out if we cannot see the finish line of the virus. But I repeat it once again, this is not written in the letter. This is not said by the dicastery. This is my personal viewpoint. So I close the parenthesis, the personal parenthesis. Sister Tiziana, we lose you. I hope uh, your connection is okay because sometimes I feel that your connection is not so stable. I don't know whether you're using Wi-Fi or the Ethernet cable. I'm using the Wi-Fi. So it is a little bit unstable. I don't know whether you can connect with the Ethernet cable soon. Let's have a try. It says unstable connection. I can see it from the signal, but we can continue. And we do hope that uh, your connection will accompany us. The next question is very interesting and very concrete for many congregations. Now, can the uh, fair um, uh, chapter be held uh, in a hybrid situation, half in presence in person and half online, or some in person and some online? Well. We have uh, to see on a case-by-case -case, uh, scenario what we mean by the uh, chapters for the affairs. Because in general, according to our tradition, the chapter is a whole. The chapter is a unique reality in itself where there's no separation between Uh, Alia Negozia, other affairs, any other business and elections of the new uh, government. And personally speaking, I'm much more convinced uh, if I think of a chapter that is a whole, considered as, as a whole, looking at all the aspects uh, of the life of an institute without making any distinction between any other business and elections of leadership that is supposed to carry out the affairs, the general affairs. But I know that institutes have this tradition of separating the two. If this is a chapter of general affairs and not just an assembly. If uh, there must be voting on the general affairs that have been discussed, it's always the same issue. 
over and over again, voting using the platforms has not yet been uh, allowed for, at least for the time being. If instead uh, this uh, chapter of general affairs is just the occasion to meet, to discuss, to discern, to talk, to check and verify, and if there's no voting involved, no doubt they can be held uh, online. The other question is very much related to this. In a general chapter, is there a part that can be done online and then the rest will be continued in person, with in-person meeting? A chapter shall have an opening and a closing. So, uh, as I said last time as well, though we have uh, to wait for this opening and closing, so we have uh, to wait uh, another time when it is possible to meet in person, there may be realities that we might start to um, deal with uh, using a telecommunication so without considering the chapter as it has already started. It is as if uh, with the creativity try to start to launch realities, uh, conversations, uh, that should uh, be held during the chapter. I'm thinking, for example, one of the key realities uh, when we are brought together for a chapter is to get to know each other. All the delegates uh, need to know each other and all the members participating in the chapter. Now, mutual understanding might be anticipated and done beforehand in a creative manner using a platform. Or, for example, uh, all the constituencies meeting that need to get to know each other. And this too might be a dimension that might be done online. So over these months that we have to wait, might be used to get to know each other. Or again, here I'm thinking of those institutes having new members in the chapter, uh, delegates who have never attended a uh, chapter. So there's a need to uh, train them uh, about what a chapter is, what are the procedures, uh, how it should be lived out. And this uh, formation part could no doubt be uh, carried out and uh, beforehand using a platform or I'm thinking of another situation, um, the number of uh, a situation already have the instrumentus laboris ready. Why not starting, uh, deepening it, uh, uh, exchanging on it online? Suffice it to what we have already written in the instrumentum laboris without considering this uh, whole new situation raised by COVID-19. And this might be a reflection to share, uh, shedding new light. Or again, there may be proposals uh, to the chapter and uh, they could be uh, started being examined uh, uh, or made the object uh, for discussion also uh, for the candidates. These are conversations that might be started to sort of making the momentum interesting because many institutes were ready to celebrate that their chapters and they've been blocked. So it would be a pity if all this is diluted after all the work, the huge work that has been done. So with a little bit of creativity, something can be started. But be careful, do not consider it the beginning of the general chapter because this would be uh, more delicate. These are preparatory work. 
no final decisions or deliberations are made. Uh, final deliberations have to be made when people meet in person. So people will have to take stock of what has already been done online to relaunch it and to confirm uh, by means of voting. I don't know whether this might be useful or not. Thank you very much, Sister Tiziana, for being so clear and for accompanying us. Also in the comments we receive on the chat, uh, they all thank you. This is um, a focused, um, many congregations have moved their chapters in 2021. Now, what is your perception? Should we stick to this date, uh, 2021, or maybe it is uh, even safer to move them to 2022? So the question was about uh, July 2021. I do hope uh, it will be possible in July 2021. I hope so. I'm almost sure what I'm saying because some were doubtful. Well, no doubt uh, uh, there won't be any chapters uh, by 2020, but we do hope and we do hope uh, in the vaccine. So the early months of next year, we can start uh, hoping again, but July 2021, I'd say yes. July 2021, yes, should be okay. As of July 2021. Well, this is a question that we received with many nuances. If my mandate uh, as provincial is over uh, before the um, provincial chapter, who is the ex officio member who will uh, serve as a provincial, uh, your mandate is never over because the decree of uh, April the 2nd stated uh, that uh, the mandates of uh, major superiors and their councils, including the provincial, are prolonged until the next uh, celebration of uh, chapters. So we have to see what the situation is like, but as a matter of fact, uh, this mandate uh, should never expire, should not expire. I don't know whether she's happy about that or not, but this is uh, what the situation is like. But uh, if there may be situations whereby general points, the provincial or other cases like this, the moment when the uh, chapter is uh, celebrated, it's the new one who will uh, take up ex officio. Thank you very much. Thank you for being so uh, clear as uh, people stating in uh, two more questions uh, on general chapters delegate who have been already elected for the general chapter. For how long are they going to remain uh, as such if the chapter is postponed? Uh, I answered this question last time too. The whole work that has been done to um, elect uh, uh, the delegates uh, remains valid because it's just uh, postponing uh, the celebration of chapters. Uh, so whatever has been done before, beforehand, uh, the instrumentum laboris, the election of delegates and so forth and so forth. All these remains uh, unchanged. Now, of course, uh, there may be special cases. So, for example, there may be some of the delegates who, for very good reasons, uh, are obliged to withdraw from being delegates. Uh, this may happen. So at that point, the uh, substitutes uh, should uh, come in because uh, there are always uh, substitutes following in uh, the list of those who have received uh, the greatest number of votes. So you need to take into account that there may be uh, changes with reference to this. Now, no doubt, there's also the rule stating that uh, one has to check that uh, the sisters uh, should not be able to uh, change their situation. So if they're moved from one continent to another, 
they are no longer uh, elected uh, from the list of one constituency to another constituency. So this uh, activity um, of uh, moving uh, from one continent to another should be in standby. But if a person changes uh, the country, she does not lose the right to remain as a delegate. But no doubt she's in standby. This is not an optimal situation. No doubt about that. Very well. Now there's a question on canonical visitations. So how to organize the necessary canonical visitations before the celebration? Could they be carried out online in this emergency period? Well, yes, no doubt, yes. Absolutely, definitely, yes. Because there's no voting in canonical visitations. Now, of course, it may happen that this is an unknown dimension. I'm thinking of uh, elderly sisters uh, might be um, embarrassed uh, uh, before a screen. I'm uh, thinking of personal uh, interviews that might be um, requested, uh, but no doubt this can take place, be carried out online. This is the only possibility we have so far, so it's better than nothing. So I, I would answer yes, yes. No doubt uh, this um, raises the whole issue of uh, forming of formation within the institutes. And on this, I'd say that we are lagging behind. But so I'm working, for example, with uh, some general councils, and there's been huge effort made to enter this new dimension. And I think that we have to work and invest energies and time in this. Because it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So we have to make the most and uh, think of the work we have been doing and Sister Florence to accompany congregations to be independent uh, when it comes to managing these platforms. Very well, Sister Tiziana, I'd like to thank you. Let's move on now to the last uh, set of uh, questions having to do with the formation. Uh, this is a very delicate uh, issue because uh, uh, of course, we have also to deal with the uh, four me's. First question, five novices have finished uh, their novitiate uh, for four months, but uh, have not been able to move on to their uh, profession, final profession. What to do? Well, these questions on formation, um, related uh, to the same canon, Canon 656, uh, paragraph 5, 656, paragraph 5. This canon, it is stated that a profession might be received by the legitimate superior in person or through others. So I can't see any inconvenience in continuing like that because then it is also a question of uh, perpetual vows of the young professed uh, sisters who have to renew. And for perpetual vows, uh, uh, it's the biggest uh, veil that is uh, uh, killed and all family members, uh, uh, families, friends, uh, uh, par parishioners uh, are invited. Uh, of course, uh, this part uh, uh, is not guaranteed, but... There can't be a big party, but there's no problem in um, commissioning one sisters who is present to um, receive the first profession, the renewal of vows. And then there was another question stating, for example, can the superior do so online? Using online means? Well, I, I do appreciate the desire of the major superior to be present, but if she delegates uh, 
another one might not think uh, there may be an issue. It would be beautiful then to have a very good connection, you know, to express a uh, feeling. But I'd say that taking uh, perpetual vows or renewing perpetual vows using uh, another sister, it's better. So I would delegate and then the party will be uh, carried out at the end of the pandemic. So there are many questions going along the same lines. The second question so seems to be related and you've already answered to this. Uh, also number three stating, uh, if a sister has already been admitted uh, to perpetual vows, so how long uh, shall she wait for? I think that um, she can proceed, no problem with that. Very well. Let's move on to question number four of this set of questions. How celebrating the renewal of vows uh, when there's no uh, celebration of the Eucharist? Well, I'd say that the uh, right of profession can be celebrated uh, also within the framework uh, of a prayer service. There's no need to have uh, the celebration of the Eucharist uh, to make quote unquote valid the renewal of vows. So in all serenity that can be uh, done, vows can be renewed within the framework of uh, prayer service. Uh, the two last questions uh, on this set of questions. What are the obligations for a congregation when a postulant is uh, exposed at a risk and does not want to get back home? Well, last time too, we had a little bit mentioned this effort, this commitment, the commitment of UISG to reach out to institutes with a letter containing some guidelines where it was, so first of all, we have to understand whether the postulant is a minor or not, and the fact of involving both the person and the family, as well as the community she's part of in this discernment, whether there's a need for her to get back home and to be very open if she decides to get back home, she has to be left free to do so. And then of course, there's a need to be respectful of the indications of different countries. If travels are not allowed, if the postulant wants to get back home, of course, she cannot travel. So we have to take into account and to stick to the rules uh, of every country. Maybe she wants to go away, but uh, she can't be allowed to, to do so because travels are not allowed. Uh, and uh, if she's at risk and she doesn't want uh, to get back home, I uh, don't think that the Institute uh, could oblige her to get back home. So there's a need for her to, to stay. Of course, uh, we are to be very careful not to expose her to risky situations. Thank you very much, Sister Tiziana, because uh, beyond uh, canon law, you always ask us to be attentive to people and relationships. Uh, the last question does not seem to be very related uh, to COVID-19, but uh, let me ask, uh, can the admission of a novice uh, with first vows uh, be considered valid uh, by a, provin a provincial council when the director of novices and the old of the community has, have said no uh, on this uh, candidate? We know that the direction of the novice pathway is the work of the master of the novices, but under the authority of the major superior. So the one who admits is the major superior and their counsel. So the answer being yes, 
um, the admission is valid because they are the ones uh, who are responsible, the uh, major superior and their council. And then if uh, somebody asks me, is it safe, is it cautious? The answer would be, of course, um, would be a negative, not affirmative, because if there's a I don't know how to put it. If there's a master of novices and the whole of the community that said no on this candidate, now we uh, run a great risk. Now, if the question is on validity, well, the um, answer is yes, it is valid. This decision is valid. Sister Tiziana, we should like to thank you very much because we've covered all questions, but I'm more than sure. I don't know if you want to add something or any other aspects that might help us this time. We've covered the most urgent questions and things. We still have time if you have something to add. No. You know. If uh, I was not clear in some passages, uh, we, we can ask questions. Uh, no questions have been asked. Uh, they all, all, all attendees have been very obedient. Uh, we still have a few minutes available, so we can invite uh, participants uh, if they like uh, to do so. We can they can ask uh, for clarifications on what Sister Tiziana has shared when you write in the chat. We try to be very quick, so it's uh, very difficult for us to understand uh, what you ask. Um, so we can leave you the floor. We have translators, so suffice uh, it to speak slowly. You can ask for the floor in the chat or you can raise the hand, not physically because I can't see the whole of you because we're, uh, there's a lot of attendees, but there's uh, the symbol of the hand, you can click on it, I can see it, and I can give you the floor. So please be very clear, otherwise it becomes very difficult for us to be able to answer. We leave you one minute for our translators to have a rest, Tiziana, so you can write. But be very clear when you ask your questions. And Sister Tiziana can have a look at the chat. And she may decide uh, which question she's going to answer. I also have um, uh, hands raised. Just a raised hand. I leave the floor to her. Sister Janet, I think you can open the mic if you like. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I missed the first uh, event. Can a major superior and her council be elected through the internet without every delegate being present in the chapter room? Yes. Yes. Can uh, the major superior and her council be elected over the internet without the delegates being present in the chapter room? No, they can't. They can't. No, they can't. It's not possible. Because both the decree dated uh, April the 2nd and uh, the letter dated uh, July the 1st uh, both confirm that it is not possible to celebrate uh, chapters uh, where there's uh, a need for electing uh, members. Uh, 
of the new leadership team and this cannot be celebrated online. So there's a need for the uh, presence, the physical presence. What the letter of July the 1st allows for uh, in exceptional situations is to hold the councils, general and provincial councils uh, online using the technology. And if there's a need to uh, vote, a platform can be used. And I was uh, suggesting, always asking for authorization. Every institute has to uh, uh, make the request, has to ask for the authorization. Thank you very much, Sister Tiziana. Well, I think that we have uh, time to answer some of the questions that we received on the chat. Over to you to decide which one you would like to answer. And then we close this meeting online. There are many of them. I cannot select them for you. It's better for you to select the questions you would like to answer. Here there's a question about diocesan law uh, congregation, diocesan right uh, congregations. Uh, this is a very interesting question, very good questions, uh, because as a matter of fact, uh, this is not uh, specified uh, in the letter of July the 1st. And so this said, I'm not sure about the answer to give this question. Of course, we know very well that uh, the uh, Institutes of Diocesan Right uh, refer to ordinary legislation. So dispensations and so on and so forth uh, are under the ordinary procedure, but I'm not so sure. But I will check whether the dicastery in, uh, is meant to take this responsibility for giving authorization only for institutes of pontifical right or also for institutes of diocesan right. So I'll, I commit myself to understand what is the reasoning of the dicastery and let you know. I don't know how I can reach to you. Margaret, can we note down the name of the sister who's asked this question, Margaret Palliser. Okay, so I will check and let you know. This is another question. We've already answered this. When the, the chapter is celebrated uh, one year later, the next term will be how long? the same, so six years. There's no reduction uh, for, for uh, the fact that it was postponed one year. There's no reduction of uh, one year for the next uh, leadership team, no. Is it compulsory or optional to confirm the appointment of the Secretary General and the Bursar if the Janet chapter is postponed uh, again and again. We have to un understand what constitutions uh, say. Uh, so your own right, your own constitutions. If this appointment if this appointment uh, should be taking place before the general chapter is celebrated. As I was uh, telling you, if uh, there are no problems, no issues, uh, no special issues, uh, it would be better to confirm these roles uh, to get together for the whole leadership team to um, continue until the next uh, chapter. But if uh, there's reason why these people need to be changed, 
appoint the Superior General and their Council proceeds to appointing and then these people will be confirmed when the chapter is celebrated. This one in Spanish, I'm not sure. Patricia, can you help me? Online councils should, could be held only now or also in the post-COVID uh, situation. No, no. Well, the letter is very uh, clear. It's an exceptional measure, extraordinary measure. And when the uh, pandemic uh, outbreak uh, is overcome, will be necessary again uh, to hold uh, these uh, meetings uh, in, in person. Her sister, Margaret, uh, was uh, saying with good reasons, and another sister asked about uh, the congregations of the diocesan right. Uh, so this may be interesting for other sisters. So, so could you please uh, send us uh, uh, a question about this uh, and uh, we will make the, your answer available to everybody because uh, in ordinary terms, it's uh, the ordinary um, procedure that is followed, but I'm not sure because the dicastery has not specified this. So well, it's better to check, for me to check and to ask the question instead of uh, taking it for granted that the ordinary procedure is used. So it's the ordinary and it's not the dicastery. Well, this is the question. Uh, the, the, this is a question about uh, regularizing. Uh, regularization, you've already answered. Uh, if there have been uh, council meetings uh, online in exceptional cases, also before the COVID, uh, is there a need to ask for regularization? I repeat it once again. Don't be so scrupulous, I'd say. If this voting uh, has been quite easy without any specific issues related to it, if there's not been tension attached uh, to this voting, if there's been no sep division, I, I, I'd say be sure and go on. If, should you have the feeling that someone might go to the castry stating with uh, there's been uh, irregular voting well in that case uh, it's better to write and say since we didn't know we've um, admitted uh, this sister to perpetual vows uh, the uh, perpetual vows have already been made and so we ask for the possibility to regularizing this uh, situation. Hope I made myself clear. So try to use common sense. Don't be there and don't write to the dicastery because uh, it's also holiday time uh, for every to be authorized about every single decision that you've made. If you feel, if you have the feeling that it might be difficult situations or delicate situations. There are also questions that have nothing to do with this, so I'm not considering them. For example, Claire Sisters, is a federal assembly can be celebrated online? Well, a federal assembly, I don't think so. I don't think there's voting. It depends. Depends what sort of assembly it is. If they have to vote for the president of the 
federation, well, this is one thing, but if it's a simple assembly to share about the life, well, they can be held online, no problem with that. So the distinction is always the same. If there's voting or elections, well, this makes the difference. It's voting elections. So this would be electoral uh, assembly. So no, the, quest, the answer is not. No, same rules are to be followed. Sister Tiziana, I'd like to close, but there are two questions that seem to be very important to me. The first, which good reason sisters ask themselves so whether these uh, requests to be made to the dicastery should be use ordinary post or online email. Is it said in the letter? Is this stated in the letter? No, this is not specified. It was only specified in the decree. It was said in the decree of April the 2nd, it was specified that once the new dates for the celebration of the chapter, the dicastery should be informed uh, by written, in writing, by written communication sent via email to the following uh, email address or uh, through the fax. So in that case, uh, that uh, specified uh, in the letter of July the 1st, this is not said. So I'd use uh, the same uh, uh, guidelines as in the degree of uh, April the 2nd. Said uh, email. If you go on the website, you have the telephone numbers, uh, the physical address, but you do not have an email address. Uh, so this is a very clear message, uh, the, the way they want to be contacted. Sister Tiziana, there's another question that is repeated over and over again, so I'm asking you now. Is it possible that people invited uh, to the general chapter be given the right to vote uh, to the general chapter by delegates? No, this is not possible. No, no. The right to uh, voting power, no. What delegates can give is uh, the right to, um, to speak. This is negotiable. This can be uh, passed on to others, uh, though these are simple observers, but they can be given the floor, but they cannot be given uh, the power to vote, voting power, because this uh, would change the composition of the chapter has been um, organized uh, in the smallest uh, details uh, because we know that uh, there's a, a well set number of delegates. Uh, delegates should be elected uh, uh, following a given procedure. So there's a whole procedure to be followed uh, to reach the quorum. And so this is not possible. This is no longer negotiable. So there's uh, the uh, convening the chapter and then it's a whole package and you have to stick to it. So they can be given right to take the floor, but they cannot be given voting power. Thank you very much, Sister Tiziana. I'd like to thank you for being so available and the work that you've done to prepare for this meeting. Listen, Patricia, Sister Chiara says that she's asked the dicastery about sending requests for online councils and I've been answered that, that this can be sent off the mail. So thank you very much. Have you got the email address? If you could uh, share with us, so that would be very useful. It's the same. So could you, S-E-G-R at religiosi.va So we've sent you in the chat the email address. Maybe Sister Clara, uh, Chiara can confirm. 
could you please write in the chat and confirm this is the email address? You can unmute yourself, Sister Chiara, if you like. This is uh, the email address contained uh, in the decree of April the 2nd. You can use this one, I think. Uh, well, this is the email of the dicastery, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Chiara, we can. I talked uh, with the Under Secretary, Sister Carmen, and she told me that you can use this email address you've written. And uh, another one I'm writing in the chat. It's everything written on chat, so thank you very much. So I should like to invite you to take notes of these uh, email addresses. Now, as to the recordings, I'm not sending it off uh, through the email, but generally speaking, we upload it on our website, on our YouTube uh, uh, channel, so you may find it uh, in the uh, YouTube channel, because uh, you can imagine how many webinars we do have, as you, you find the recordings on our YouTube channel and you can access uh, through the uh, website. Uh, there are social media and uh, you go on the sessions of playlists. The playlists are categories and you can find everything there. If it's too hard for you, please write me, write to me and I will be sending you. But it's, um, very hard for me to send to everybody. So I should like to thank once again, Sister Tiziana for her help, for her availability, for her accompaniment uh, over this uh, difficult time. And should you have uh, any more doubts, feel free to address a canon law, lawyer for uh, more information, more details. I should like to thank everybody. I should like to thank our translators, uh, our interpreters who've helped us uh, to communicate. Sister Therese, I thank you very much for uh, making all this possible. And I should like to remind you of the online prayer tomorrow. It will be in English, in Italian, in Portuguese, and in Spanish as well. It will be uh, from 3 to 4.30, organized uh, together with uh, La Clare, the um, Conference of Religious uh, of uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, and uh, ACWR, one of the two conferences of religious uh, in the US. I should like to thank everybody. Thank you very much, Sister Tiziana. I hope uh, you can go on holiday because you deserve it. We all deserve it. So thank you very much and have a, a nice day or good night for those who are on the other side of the world. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.